Welcome back to another 5 Minute Friday, guys. Today we're going to talk about overlanding. This is an exciting one for me. It's been a long time coming and I've poked and prodded and everything we do um, is on the shoulders of this guy. So he is uh, the one who holds this ship from uh, shaking itself loose. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to my friend, Nasaj. 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 That's all right. Come on. Come on. I get, I just... <laughs> Sorry. No, no, worries. Uh, no worries, man. It's all right. Uh, good to see you, brother. <laughs> Thanks for having me, buddy. I can't believe you talked me into this. Yeah, I was super surprised when you agreed to it, but uh, I know you have kind of the polar opposite opinion on some of these things as I do, so I thought it would be, uh, uh, it would give it a well-rounded outlook. You know, well, I got to be honest, I was thinking about bailing this morning, but you're right. Overlanding is something that's... Uh, near and dear to my heart and uh, something that I'm passionate about. So um, so let's start with, uh, well, let's start with a little bit about your history and how you got into this and kind of what you do for Ox. I guess you could say I'm a, kind of the silent workhorse while uh, this guy is glad handing on social media with you yahoos. I'm uh, <laughs> behind the scenes kind of uh, pushing things and making sure sh this whole ship kind of keeps moving forward. Okay, so the big opening question uh, what do you think overlanding is? <laughs> you, uh, you want to know my opinion on overlanding? <laughs> I'm not sure I'm the right guy to ask for this. I might get voted off the island if I give my honest opinion. <laughs> Currently, how, wh what do you feel about overlanding? How do you feel it is? And, uh, yeah, uh, what do you think overlanding is currently? Uh, my Personal opinion is I think the whole thing is silly and the bigger it gets the more ridiculous it becomes. Well, el elaborate. W why do you think it's silly? Oh, why is it silly? I, I, I just think the whole thing is. From the amount of money these people are spending on rigs to take out a couple times a year to the ridiculous amount of gear that they're putting on their rigs. I, I, I mean, is anybody really testing this stuff out? Cause y you got you got to understand that you're putting so much extra weight on these rigs and you wouldn't put a second story on a house without upgrading the foundation, so why would a vehicle be any different? Okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. Y you feel like um, people are spending too much money on overland rigs and they're carrying an unnecessary amount of gear. Uh, what do you mean by this? I mean, we took 22-year-old vehicles. No, no, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about everything I'm seeing online, at events, and otherwise. It's it's contradictory to how I got into this. I feel like it, it, when I got into overlanding, it was about getting away from civilization and, and seeing this amazing planet we live on. And, and it didn't matter if you were in a 1972 gremlin packed to the gills with kids and gear or a brand new 4x4 outfitted for the zombie apocalypse. Now all I see is a few overlanders and a whole lot of weekend car campers with overpriced vehicles meeting up at spots that are as busy as the mall parking lots they belong in. And, by the way, when did what you drive, how you cook your food, and what you sleep in become the standard for if you're an overlander or not, whatever that means? Sorry, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm ranting. You, you ask my opinion, I get a little passionate about this, sorry. That, that, I just feel like it, it's a little bit out of control right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, I can definitely see where you're coming from, but hasn't overlanding always been kind of this light-hearted thing that uh, has always been about kind of getting outdoors and enjoying yourself. And in the end, does what you call yourself really matter if you enjoy what you're doing? <laughs> I think you're confusing uh, overlanding with camping. Historically, overlanding was a term used by Australians uh, in reference to herding their livestock over long distances. It was also used in the Pioneer Day to express their journeys over long distances. Um, typically by ox and wagon, but it wasn't specific to any form of travel. Um, it wasn't until recently that we've been using overlanding as this term for this extreme car camping. So that's kind of the history of the word, I guess. Dang, land some history. Listen, you know my opinion on this. I, I love everything overlanding and I'm a tech guy. So I absolutely love the fusion of 
of the tech world and the outdoors. That's what overlanding is to me. It's this expression of, of my love for the outdoors, but also for mechanics in that kind of techie, sciencey world. I feel like it's, it's about the experience. It's about the community. It's about people. But, I, I mean, I don't feel like anybody needs to be necessarily pinned down by any certain definition. Yeah, but that's exactly what I'm saying is there's a difference between the way you and I prefer to travel. I mean, the overland lifestyle isn't easy. It's not a vacation. It's a choice. It's a, a decision to live your life differently. Listen, all I'm saying is there's a big difference between the way you and I prefer to travel, correct? Well, yeah, of course. Well, then why do we call it the same thing? It might be petty and inconsequential, and I know it doesn't really matter in the long term, but it means something to me because I put a lot of my time and energy and, and years into this passion I have, and I guess I just prefer to have a distinction between the way you and I prefer to travel. I guess I just sense. never saw the harm in lumping it all together. I mean, we do this with everything else. Likewise, I think you get the same thing with overlanding. If you say you're a full-time overlander or you prefer the expedition style of travel, I think that's where the distinction Oh, that's fair. In. That's fair. Listen, it, it's just silly if you take a step back and think about the fact that people are spending over $100,000 on a rig that rarely sees the trail. I mean, if you take a step back and you look at it, it's an unnecessary amount of gear and stuff for what we do. It's just a little silly. That's all I'm saying. It's just <laughs> a little silly. Fair enough. Yes, fair enough. If you look at it that way, it is a little, a little ridiculous. Uh, so we can agree that the state of overlanding sometimes is a little bit uh, silly. And we've talked about the history of overlanding a little bit. Um, so in a perfect world, how would you make it less silly? I would change how people viewed overlanding. I would expose people to, I guess, how liberating and uh, uh, incredible it can be to spend an extended amount of time on the road. There's some satisfaction you get from pushing yourself and challenging yourself and persevering. It's something that you feel, I guess. And, and that's something that I want overlanders to understand. That's why I wanted you on here. Uh, you're a guy that puts, um, you put a lot into overlanding and it's something you're very passionate about and you have kind of a, I guess, old school outlook on, on what overlanding is. So. Uh, thank you. That wasn't uh, <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? You think we could get you back on here again? Yeah, you're right. It definitely wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And uh, yes, you could probably convince me to uh, come back on. Right on, guys. Well, we love uh, your guys's comments and the conversations we have. So if you have any questions or comments for either me or Nasaj, um, please leave those below. And uh, as always. Hit that subscribe button if you like what we're doing, and if you'd like to boost Nisaj's confidence to come on again, uh, hit that like button. Um, and we will see you guys next week on 5 Minute Friday. Later! Peace.